At the end of this video, we'll take a look at Mad Ramp's innovative pivoting ramp system, the safer, easier way to transport your ATVs and snowmobiles. Stick around. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our friends at the historic Lancaster Motel in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Lancaster Motel has been serving snowmobilers since the 60s and they are the perfect eastern trail riding destination for snowmobilers young and old. The Lancaster Motel is right on Corridor Trail 5 in Lancaster, New Hampshire with plenty of parking for vehicles, sleds and trailers. Plus, the Lancaster Motel is within walking distance of Crane's Snowmobile Museum plus restaurants, shopping, entertainment and more. Click the link in the description to learn more about the Lancaster Motel. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really happy you're here tonight. We have a full slate of vintage snowmobile entertainment on tap for you. We're going to be getting to that in just a moment. We've got Jim Layton in the green room. But before we get to that, I want to make sure that everything is working correctly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment for me. Uh, let me know where you're viewing this from. Let me know whether you're a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. I also have a message for the first-time viewers and the regular viewers. If you're a first-time viewer, I thank you for stopping by to check us out. I hope that you'll decide to check us out every week. We do this every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you're a regular viewer, I thank you so much for coming back every week and making this possible. It really means a lot, and this is how we grow the program. And before we get to Jim Layton, uh, I want to ask a small favor of each of you. Uh, if you like what you're seeing with this podcast, if you could either share this on your profile or share it on a friend's profile, someone who you think might enjoy this, or send it to them in a private message, I would really appreciate that. That helps to get the word about uh, helps to get the word out about this program so that we can grow it and and make it sustainable. So let's take a look at who's uh, on tap here tonight watching with us. We've got a regular viewer, Brian Robillard from Putnam, Connecticut. Thanks for being on, Brian. We're going to have Brian on, I think, next week or the week after. He's got some sleds and things he's going to show us. We have Tracy and Dudley Skipinski, regular viewers from Michigan. Thanks for coming on, guys. We've got Brody Messner from Henderson, Minnesota, and he's got um, a couple of things that he sent me this week. We're going to be showing a little later in the announcements part of the program. Uh, we have Daryl Folk from Pennsylvania. Thanks for coming on, Daryl. We have uh, Stacy and Art Fosler. Look forward to this show every week. God, guys, that really means a lot that you guys are on here every week and look forward to it. That really means a lot, and I appreciate that. David Noon from New Hampshire, first-time viewer. Thanks for coming on, David. Hopefully, we'll see you, every, see you here every week as well. Petrangelo James says, this is cool, and I hope I haven't mispronounced your name. Um, yeah, I appreciate your coming on. Uh, Tom Grigley, a 
Gregory, a regular viewer from Kalkaska, Michigan. Appreciate your coming on. We have UP Snowbiker, first time viewer from Houghton, Michigan. Thanks for coming on and checking us out. I really appreciate that. We have Pat Lima from Southeast Missouri. Appreciate your coming on. We have Tim Rosenthal. Uh, he's back for another time. He, I, I remember seeing him on here last week from Newdorf, Saskatchewan. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we have Perry Kemitz. Chemnitz. Apologize for mispronouncing that. Regular viewer from Pembina, North, Car North Dakota. Mixing up my states here. Nick Kafez, loud and clear from Shelby, Michigan. Uh, TWP, I'm not sure what that means. I should know what that means. But uh, Mitch Kinty from Leslie, Michigan. I'm probably mispronouncing that too. Eric Cousineau from Maine. Thanks for coming on, Ke uh, Eric. You were on this morning, and I appreciate that. I appreciate your humor this morning in that uh, little podcast we did, that little test we did. Christine Shad from Nina, Wisconsin. Thanks for coming on, Christine. We've got Tom Peters on from Presque Isle, Maine. We're going to try to get Tom Peters on here real soon. He is an inductee into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, and he's got a whole lot of things he wants to do, some show and tell, and we're just trying to work through some technical issues to get him on here. Uh, Mike Music from Mitchell, South Dakota. Mark Elkin from Richmond, New Richmond, Wisconsin. Mitch uh, says, first time viewer, loud and clear. Thanks for coming on and checking us out, Mitch. We have Bruce Halverson, first time viewer. Thanks for coming on, Bruce. Hope you'll join us every week here at the same bat time, same bat channel. 9 p.m. Thursday nights. Uh, John Springer Jr., regular viewer. He has his twin brother watching now. Still only two inches of snow. He hates to see what his lawn is going to look like when the snow is gone, especially if you're riding around that lawn with your carbides. That's going to tear it up. Uh, Rick Petruco, regular viewer. Yes, we recognize you, Rick. And uh, sorry you missed us last week, but we're, we're glad you're here. Just a few more here. Tom Kubokes from Revelstoke, BC, Canada. Scott Alexander Beaton from High River, Alberta. John Fitzgibbons, Syracuse, New York. Loves the show. Awesome show. Thank you, John. Uh, Larry Andrews from Bradford, Ontario, Canada. And uh, Pete Ayers. Glad he's found us from upstate New York. I'm glad that we found you as well, Pete. Nick Kafez from TW... Oh, Township. Okay, thank you for uh, correction on that. I appreciate that, Nick. Uh, Bruce Halverson, Tomahawk, Tomahawk Wisconsin. Corey Burke from Sioux, Canada, and Carl Ling Leiberger from Southwick, Massachusetts. Okay, let's not keep Jim waiting any longer. Let's bring Jim Layton onto the stream here. And how are you doing tonight, Jim? Oh, I don't have his mic. Let me... Sorry. Too much going on here. There we go. I think we'll be able to hear you now. There how you doing, go. Jim? How are you? Thank you. Good, good. Thank you so much for being on. I appreciate it. I see Tom's on. Hey, Tom. Oh, I think the audio dropped on you. Uh, you hear me all right? Oh, boy. Yeah, we lost your audio, Jim. I'm not sure what happened. Let me uh, click and then click it back on and see if that fixed it. How's that? Yeah. Oh, no, boy. We're missing your audio. Um, oh, wait. Maybe that's just on my end. Let me fix try this. Yeah, if you could say something for me, Joe. Yep. How's that? Okay, audio is back. I'm not sure why that did that, but we're back in business here. Uh, yeah, Jim is here. He's got some things he wants to show us. Uh, yeah, take it away, Jim. I'm going to hand it over to you if you want to switch that camera around. And then while you're switching the camera, I'm going to ask people to comment on what Jim is showing us. If you have comments or questions, um, yeah, just ask away, and he'll be happy to answer questions for you. Here we go. How's that? That's perfect. Okay. I love that mini. That's really cool. Yeah, we had that on last time, but it sits in my garage because I like to take it out and mess around a little bit. So this nice. is just a, uh, for the ones that haven't seen it, just a little homemade. Uh, it's actually a Murray Track 2 mini bike. Um, took the uh, tracks off in a uh, little sear snowblower and... Uh, Attach it to the rear of the frame of the mini bike. 
And then I got a ski off in a 67 bombardier, shortened it up. Just stuck it on. It's 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 fun to take and just zoom around the uh, the shows, you know, when, when we have them. Um, it, you know, it, it, it don't get out in the powder much, but it, uh, it sure is fun driving around the parking lot of shows. Yeah, I'll bet it is. I bet that'll do some good donuts, too. Can you do donuts on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Well, you know, it's always a work in progress, but it's uh, it, it, it's fun. It's fun. Wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll move on to the uh, within the collection here. Uh, this is the 1970 Alpine. Um, it's a 399. Uh, we have four of these, and from 67 to 70. Uh, the 68 is the only one that really is not running. It's got a 399 motor in it as well, and it's stuck. Uh, yeah. I haven't really had time to play with it. The other ones are single cylinders. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're a tank, um, but they're, they're a lot of fun just to go play with. So uh, where there's not much snow out there right now, I just I thought it'd be fun to bring the Alpine out and just play around the fields and stuff with uh, you know, like the old song, it takes 40 acres to turn it around, but it, it is, it's just a joy to, to ride and, and have fun with. This one has reverse. Um, it's in pretty good shape for the, uh, for the year of it. Uh, electric start. Nice. So, I remember uh, seeing those back in the day. Those, those were what would tow the groomers back in the early days of trail riding, at least in my experience of it. Yes. Yeah, it, it, and it runs real well. Nice. So, uh, just the, just the, I, I'm going to the fishing derby at Long Lake this weekend, and I'm thinking about loading this up and and taking it to uh, taking it to the lake with me, and just go out and hang out and watch, drive around and watch people fish and talk to people. And not much of a fisherman myself, but I do enjoy uh, going up and hanging out with with people and bringing stuff like this to, to talk about. Nice. Uh, I would imagine that would be a real conversation starter having that out there with the ice fishing. It, ice it, fishermen. It, it's amazing how, how many people will come up and want to stop and talk to you. Nice. Now the people that see it, do they know what it is or are they, what the heck is that? Uh, some people do. Some do. Uh, most are kind of, you know, they look at it and, can't quite figure it out, and, uh, <laughs> especially the younger ones. But the, uh, but you know, a lot of the people that are up there fishing, they they've seen them before somewhere. Maybe you've never seen one in person, but uh, you know, especially this old. Uh, I I know that there are two guys at the lake right now that are fishing, and they got like a 1984 and 85, I think, is what they have alpines. Uh, right. They're they're up from downstate somewhere fishing and that's what they brought up so i'm kind of anxious to meet them yeah for sure and you're right i mean it back in the day it was a common sight to see these but today it's just it's not something you see no um no yeah so it's it's got to be a real uh eye catcher i would think yeah. and uh i think jack ulch who's i don't know if you can see on the lower left of the screen there he says it best he says he wants it yeah <laughs> there they there's when, when usually when people see him especially when we hook the ski boost up to it and you, you know, you haul it along with this and have the ski boots hooked behind it. It, it really makes a show. Nice. And uh, Jack Ulch is also asking, is that a 640cc in there? This is a 399 version. 399. Nice. Yeah. Yep. I think the uh, 68, I'm not sure if that was an original 640, but it has a 399 motor in it right now. But I haven't really had time to pull that motor and do anything with it. Um and then the other the other ones are, are all single cylinders. Gotcha. So, yeah. Now, with those single cylinders, do you find that's enough power to move a machine like that, or is it does it work for it? Uh, it, it works hard, but it, it, it does the trick. You know, I, I've never really done. had it out the single cylinder ones out in the powder, um, and I don't really dare to take this out in the powder either because I don't want to get stuck. But I, you know, we you do a little vintage trail ride, or you go out like now when you've got six eight inches of snow and ride around and it works real well but you know they, they always used to take these things out and break trail with them so uh, yeah you know they just i don't i don't feel like getting stuck <laughs> yeah no doubt that would be a beast to try to get unstuck especially if you're by yourself yeah 
So uh, one of the other things that I've got that I just kind of brought in and I'm trying to decide what I'm doing with it. And I've asked for some help online and got quite a bit of help. I knew that this machine that you're seeing here, the yellow, um, I knew that it's a black dot chassis, 1970. Yeah. Uh, and in 1970, they made two versions, which was a 340 and a 399, uh, 340 and a 292. Um, so I really, without a tag on this, I didn't know exactly what it was. And with some help from some friends around the, the vintage snowmobile world, basically looking at the double roll chain and the 16 tooth sprocket on the front tells them that's a, that it's a 340 uh, black dot chassis. So nice. I've got most everything to build this 340 black dot. And uh, so I, I brought it up out of the, with the rest of them and said, it's time to, time to see what I can do with it, get it cleaned up and maybe start restoring it. Wonderful. So this is your next project. That's it. Well, it's one of them. Yes. Yes. Good deal. Uh, we did talk about that uh, screw last time I was on. That's yeah. still sitting here. I'm waiting for the motor to, uh, I got a buddy of mine that's trying to get the motor cleaned up and get it firing and running right. Um, yeah. That's a 1971, I believe. I'm not familiar really with the screw rules, but uh, as I mentioned last time, it's kind of a Johnny Cash sled. It's got a single cylinder sled and a 440 chassis and a, uh, you know, 300, it's a slide suspension, but just something that we, uh, that we we're putting together for a buddy of mine so he can have something that his grandparents used to have. Nice. And these are all parts, according to the song, that have been snuck out in a lunchbox, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All the time, so... <laughs> I don't know if there's any questions before I move on to the next one. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, to the viewers, if you have questions at this point for Jim, by all means, uh, post them. And, uh, and yeah, he's going to show us a few things while we're waiting for some questions to come in. Just a few motors. So, got a, we talked about this last time. It's a 72 kitty cat. Yeah. Really good shape. Waiting, waiting in the wings for my granddaughter. She's only 18 months old, so it's going to take a little bit before she can get on it, but I can't wait. She's got that waiting for her. Yeah. Now, if you could go back a little, was that a purple mini bike? Was that a, one of those old Articat mini, mini bikes? It, it's, this one's not an Articat. Uh, I've been looking for one because I want to get one for my kitty cat. Yeah. This is a, uh, just a little, uh, I'm not even, I can't even remember now what the name brand of these, these two mini bikes are. But they're the old schools. They're from 1970. Yeah. Um, I built this one for my daughter when she was like three years old. She's yeah. 28 now. And last wow. summer, I built this one for my granddaughter. And like I said, she's just turned, she's just over 18 months old now. So just figure I'd hang them in the rafters until she's ready for the toys. Very nice. Yeah, she's got a nice childhood waiting for her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's going to well, be fun times. So the last thing I got to show you, we'll move on here, is, is uh, I had my father's uh, 797 Blizzard. This is a 1971 uh, Skidoo Blizzard. There was 170, I should have looked before, but 170 some made uh, of these sleds. They're, they were just, just built for racing. Uh, he bought this sled brand new in 71. The, uh, I guess from what I understand, the rough cost of these sleds are around $2,500 Wow! for this machine um, back then. So that was quite a, quite a bit of cash. Uh, sat down in our farm here in, a, in disrepair for a long, long time and, uh, till uh, Rob and Leo Kiefer from Kirib come along and they grabbed it up, they took it over and they restored the whole thing and, and uh, now it's, she's she's all back to, you know, maybe not brand new, but it's it's pretty close. There's it's I think it, I think it's probably ninety percent original. Uh, had to have a new track put on it, and we can only find I think one exhaust pipe at the time um, when we when we pulled all the parts together, and so they had brand new exhaust built, uh, the motor totally redone. And you know, brand new seat built. Um, so this is his. Uh, this is my father bought this sled originally, and 
he's he's 91 years old now and and this this thing right here if i was gonna you know i really love the 1970 olympics but this this thing here is right it tugs at my heartstrings I, I yeah for sure love this machine and i bet your father likes to see that as well that must he bring does. back a lot of memories for him he does and he he's always been really good with mechanics of these things and and he can take this thing and tweak it and make it just sing it's 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 really, really, it's amazing how he can sit down with, with this machine and just with a screwdriver and, and do a little tinker. And before you know it, the thing is running like, like a top. That's amazing. Now, speaking of which, uh, Dick Kafez is watching and he'd like to know if you could fire that up. I can fire that up. I think I can fire it up. I'll, I'll set the phone down and, and, and as long as I don't make a mistake and flood it. <laughs> okay, sure. I will, I'll get it fired up here. Um, but I'll let the, let me see if I can set my phone down so they, they can see it. Sure. Let's see here. I'll pick it back up once I get it running, but I hope the phone don't fall. That's all right. If it does, we'll understand. We'll be waiting for you. Yeah, I bet that's loud in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that crackle, though. That sounds amazing. <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing machine. It's, it's, I can't imagine how they wrote, raced these back in the day. But, uh, yeah, they all did. Tom Peters will be able to tell you all about that. Yes, in fact, he left a comment. I don't know if you can see it or not. He's saying he remembers racing against that. Yeah, yeah. They were all uh, they were all good friends and, and race race good together. Nice, nice. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, and Tom Peters also says he remembers it well. And to say hi to your dad, he must remember your dad as well. He, oh yes, he knows my dad well. Yeah. Nice. And then one comment from earlier too. I, I, it's out of sight now, but uh, Jack Ulsh was asking where in Maine that you're located. I'm located in northern Maine in Limestone. Northern. Okay, Limestone. Yeah. Okay. And then Jack also mentioned those mini bikes, those purple mini bikes. He's thinking they might be Rupp mini bikes. No, um, I've always wanted to find a Rupp, but they're they're not. I know they're not Rupps because I have a good friend that has a Rupp collection, and uh, uh, they're they're not Rupps, but they're. Uh, I think the pink one is 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 more like a a Sears bot bike. Yeah. And I thought the I thought the purple one at first when I got it because of the lay down handlebars was an Indian, a uh, little yeah. Indian I guess they called them, uh, but I found out that wasn't it. And somebody told me what the name it was. I just can't, I just can't remember what it was. Sure. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a third one that I built this summer. Um, I actually have it on a stool in my office. Um, it's uh, I had painted I had it painted green and. Uh, did a lot of work to the motor. It's souped up and it, it, it'll run about 50, 45, 50 miles an hour with me on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so, pretty darn quick. So, so it'll roll right along. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Now I know this is getting off topic a little bit, but I keep catching a glimpse of a Chevy pickup truck there. I wonder if you could just give us a quick look at that. So I, I, I got this, I don't know, four or five years back. It's a 1987 uh, short box, four-wheel drive Chevy pickup. 
uh, had a plow on it when I bought it. And I, I bought it and said, I'm going to use that to plow with, even though I had a truck with a plow on it. But the price was right. Sure. And I brought it home and I played around with it. And I got to looking at it and I'm like, you know, this thing's worth a lot of money if I fix it up. <laughs> and so again, you know, I always think about my granddaughter and I'm like, you know, so I brought it in the garage um, and I, and I've started buying parts for it. Uh, I'm going to strip it down, probably not frame off restoration, but I'm going to strip it down and get it right and get it painted. And I told my daughter, I said, I have 15 years to do it before she turns 16 years old to, to get her license. So I got a little time to fix it, but, um, that's what I'm going to, that's, that's what I'm going to shoot for. Cause it's a really nice truck, really solid, uh, you know, besides a few panels that are rotted and rusty here or there, but so a little bit of work, I'll have her done and get her ready for her to to play with around the fields, and then hopefully use it for her drive for drive someday. Awesome, yeah, she's gonna love that. It's a yeah. great project, and you're right. You know, all fixed up. That's that's gonna fetch a few bucks. Yeah, that, those that's things, a good uh, investment. These little short bed, square body trucks fetch a, fetch a lot of money when they're yeah. right. Nice, that's cool. That's a good investment right there. Yeah. So, Good deal. So those are the those are the toys. I don't know if this thing will start, but it's. Uh, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, yeah, by all means. So they're all That's running cool. tonight. That's cool. That's One of these days, Jim, if you ever have a chance, if you've got that out in the yard, that little that mini right there, I would love to see some footage of that if you ever have that out in the yard. I'll, one of these nice days there, I'll, uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll... Um, yeah, we can I'll share the footage on the, on the, the, the future podcast. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'll do oh, that. Did we, lose you, did we lose the audio, Jim? I don't oh, know. Oh, I Are see you? what happened. We lost... I don't know what makes that audio go away. Okay. Yeah, I think I have your audio back now, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do. I'll I'll uh, get a video of that sometime. Send it to you. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. That would be amazing. Well, cool. Uh, any any final thoughts, Jim, before we go? Or no, I just appreciate you having me on, and where I can't get out and show my toys off to anybody because there's nobody doing shows. This is this is a good chance to chat with people and you know show see what everybody's got out there so yeah for sure really it's a, enjoying it. well i appreciate that i appreciate that and you're right it, it's a nice way for people to share and share what they have in in this pandemic situation uh without putting yourself at risk right and we can see what people have in different parts of the country and canada and it's just a wonderful way to see what people are doing in this hobby it is it is so thank thank you very much for letting me come on well, my pleasure. Thanks, Jim. We'll have you on another time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll we'll pick up some more sleds and, and show you some more stuff. All righty. Take care. All righty. Well, that was Jim Layton showing us his collection. He's always got some great stuff to show us, and we really appreciate him coming on. That was really fun. Uh, so let me switch screens here. Let's see where we are in the uh, program. So I've got some announcements to make here. Let me uh, get to the right screen. We've got a few things to talk about. Number one. Sad to say, the Crane's Vintage Snowmobile Show that was scheduled for next Saturday has been canceled. I know I've been pushing that real hard, and uh, that's one of my favorite shows in the East, and sadly, that has been canceled. But we do understand, you know, with COVID and everything, you do have to cancel shows. And thankfully, like Jim was saying a minute ago, we've got this this online alternative where we can do things um, online now. So that that's, that's a nice alternative. But um, do keep this in mind for next year because like i said this is one of the great shows of the east the crane snowmobile show and a little later in the program i'm going to show you some footage from 2017 uh at, at crane show also um in central new hampshire ossipee new hampshire there is a vintage show this coming weekend the hobbs vintage snowmobile show uh this coming saturday um so the information is here spectator voting is from 11 to 2 30 p.m um I'm having a hard time seeing this screen here, but it looks like the, yeah, I, I, I guess it starts around 10 or 11 a.m., um, but um, 
But yeah, look for it online, the Hobbs Vintage Snowmobile Show. If you're curious about attending that, you can find some detail on that. But that's a great show. I know some people, uh, I know Brian Robillard is going to that and Patrick Goudreau are going to that. These are friends of this show. And they're, uh, uh, Brian is talking about taking some footage for me that we can share uh, maybe next week or the week after so we can see what was going on at that show. Also, uh, Michael Stackhouse brought this to my attention. This is an item that's for sale on Facebook Marketplace. If you like this Arians Aero sign, uh, do a search for Arians Aero Snowmobile sign and see if you can find it. It's in North Conway, New Hampshire, and uh, they're looking to get $1,950 for that. Incidentally, a little later in the program, I'm going to be showing you a, a, um, a um, restoration of an Arians Aero Snowmobile. So we've got that to look forward to. Also, uh, Brody Messner, a regular viewer of this program, is searching for an Articat jacket like this one. Um, so if you'd like to contact him, look for Brody in the comments here and send him a message to, uh, to, to see about that. If, you, if you've got a coat like that, you'd like to sell him. Also, Brody, let me know about this upcoming event in Gaylord, Minnesota. It's the Lake Titlau event, Sunday, February 21st, 2021. It's their annual snowmobile event that looks to be a great show it starts at 9 8 9 30 a.m uh, in gaylord minnesota also we're going to have more on this next week or the week after but there's a new facebook group called the northwest vintage snowmobile classifieds uh it's a great group i've been on there and uh we're going to have the the person joshua the, the gentleman who runs that group we're going to have him on either next week or the week after to talk that up and and tell us a little bit more about what's going on with that. But if you'd like to take a look, search on Facebook for Northwest Vintage Snowmobile Classifieds and take a look at that. And lastly, we are looking for advertisers. This message here could be your advertising message. We have advertising packages that start at only $2.99 a month. If you have digital images of your business, I can create a graphic like this for you, talk it up for, for 60 seconds each episode, and a package like that starts at only $2.99 a month. We have a whole lot of other ways we can market your business as well. Um, and, of course, the price is reflected accordingly. But uh, do keep us in mind if you'd like to advertise your, um, your product or service on this podcast okay so let's see what we have next here we have joe wilkinson being inducted into the eastern snowmobile racing hall of fame this past fall september 2020 let's take a look the next recipient is mr joe wilkinson inducted into the eastern snowmobile racing hall of fame 2020 joe began racing skidoo for the tri-state power sled team from lee Massachusetts. And I apologize. The audio cut out on that. I don't know why it's doing that tonight. So I'm going to start that clip over. Apologize for the mix up with that. But let's start that clip over so you can catch everything. The next recipient is Mr. Joe Wilkinson. Inducted into the Eastern Snow Bureau Racing Hall of Fame 2020. Joe began racing skidoo for the Tri-State Power Sled team from Lee, Massachusetts from 1966 to 1973. At the 1969 Berkshire Hills Championship in Pittsfield, Mass., Joe took first place in Stock A, Stock B, Stock C, and Mod 1. He grabbed first place wins in Stock B, Stock C, Mod 1, and Mod 2 at the 1969 Massachusetts State Championship in Greenfield, Mass. At the end of the 1968-69 racing season, Joe was first place in points for Stock A, Stock B, and second in Stock C. He raced to second place finishes in Stock B and Mod 2 at the 1970 Eastern States Expo in West Springfield, Mass and was the overall stock winner at the 1970 Massachusetts State Championship in Greenfield, Mass. Joe had his 1970 Mod 2 Skidoo Blizzard cookie at three New York State races, taking a first in Greenfield, a first in East Jewett, a second in Lake George. He also grabbed a first in Mod 1 in Cobbleskill, New York. After a couple of second and third place finishes in 1971, Joe went on a tear, winning first in Mod 2 at Monticello, New York, in Colchester, Connecticut, and first in Mod 3 in Thompson, Connecticut. In 1972, Joe took first place wins in Mod 3 and Mod 5 at the Grand Prix, winning first overall. First in Mod 2 at Morrisville, New York. Morrisonville, New York. First in Mod 3 at Brattleboro, Vermont. Joe raced to a second place finish in Mod 2 at the 1972 Snowmobile World Series in Ironwood, Michigan. And was second in points in Mod 2 for the 1972 season in USSA. In his final season of racing in 1973, Joe 
Joe Smart two sled took a first place win at Bangor, Maine at Northampton, Mass, and he won the Pennsylvania State Championship. Joe Wilkinson's chest was never without a gold bib around it as he wore several different numbers over the years with number five gold bib being his highest. The great Joe Wilkinson from Massachusetts. A shout out to Russ Lennon for getting all of these records for Joe. I just want to say thank you to these guys for doing a good job. Uh, and they really had to work on me to get me come, to come here because I was supposed to be in Africa today. <laughs> so the Africa trip got canceled, so we come up here, and it's, it's really nice to have it. Plus, I got a lot of people here, and it cost me a lot of money to bring them up here. <laughs> Maybe they'll kick back a little bit tonight and give you some money back. What do you think? <laughs> I do have a couple stories. I like to tell stories. And how I got started in snowmobile racing is it's quite interesting because me and my brother bought our first snowmobile in 1961. And it was an old metal nose snowmobile. And then in 64 or 65, I don't remember, I bought a Skidoo, 10 horsepower, and I started tinkering with it because I was always my own mechanic. And we went racing in a small town, Great Barrington, right next to where I live. But this Rail Grant from Tri State Distributors was there with brand new machines, and he thought he was going to win the cross country. So I beat him in the cross-country race. Next year, he was down to hire me. So that's how I got my job at Tri-State Power Sled. And I, went, I was the second employee for Ray LeGrand. And then in 19, must have been 69, he sold it to Bombardier, and then I raced for Bombardier. So I had it really made in my tire racing career because I got everything paid for and everything done. And anything that I won, I got to keep. It was, it was a really good deal. I had one of the best deals going, I think. So that, that's, and I raced until Bombardier left in Lee, and they offered me a job in Duluth, Minnesota, but I didn't want to go to Duluth, and I started my own business, which I've been in business for 50 years for myself, but after I stopped racing, my boys started racing, and we raced go-karts all over the country, and one of my boys uh, won a Duffy, which is the highest award you get and get in go-karts, and then we went from there to street stocks, stock cars. We had to try stock cars out, and my other son raced stock cars for quite a few years, until in 2001, our shop burnt down with our race cars, and all my equipment, we had a million dollar fire. But we recovered, but we're not racing anymore. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that all these people that I brought here tonight will pay me back. <laughs> Tassie's gonna pay. All right, thank you. Thank you guys for stepping up to get me to come here. Thank you. Thank you. So there you have it, <clears throat> pardon me, there you have it, Joe Wilkinson inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame this past September 2020. Now this Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame has been, go has been going on now for four years, we're coming up on five, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It's a wonderful event and I encourage you to join us. Um, th these are the details about the next event, it's going to be Saturday, September 11th, 2021, Starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Time at Crane's Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Now, if you're planning to join us, a couple of things. Number one, you want to get there early because it gives you time to, to browse around in the Snowmobile Museum. Also gives you a chance to mix and mingle with inductees past, present, and future, and uh, as well as a whole host of vintage snowmobile enthusiasts. It really is a great time. And you, if you're coming, planning to come to this, you want to bring a lawn chair because it's just a big open space and we bring our own chairs. But this event just gets bigger and bigger every year and it's a whole lot of fun. The other thing, if you're planning to come from any distance away, you want to stay at the Lancaster Motel. It's walking distance from the ceremony and they have the after party at the Lancaster Motel. So as the after party winds down, you just meander over to your room and call it a night and uh, everything's just all conveniently located and it's a great time. Lastly, if you're planning to join us for this and you're planning to book a room at the Lancaster Motel, please book now because every year this uh, Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony fills the motel to capacity. So book now if you're planning to attend so you can get a room and not be left, quote unquote, out in the cold. All right, so let's uh, take a look at what's next on the agenda here. We're going to take a look at an Arians Aero restoration. That is the one that I 
promised you earlier. This was restored by Matt Perkle. Let's take a look. Here we have a vintage 1971 Aaron's Arrow 300 S snowmobile. Did a full body restoration. Top to bottom, it's just missing the windshield now that still needs to get repaired and cut down. We've been out here on Grand Lake for the past 45 minutes, putting it around the lake, making sure everything works. There's a new track, new set of uh, drive sprockets and rear cogs, new fuel line. It's running a vintage Sax SA290, 293cc engine, original to this motor, running a Tillotson HR21A with a return line feature. Now let's get a close up on that, Jill. Now we'll open up the hood so you'll see underneath everything. Original gas tank, clutch assembly, new belt, even the brake works. Just filled it up with gas this morning. Original exhaust, exhaust manifold, and everything. Nothing has been replaced except the decals, because those there, they were shot. Original clutch cover, clutches work like they should. We even no speedometer. Yeah, no speedometer, no tachometer like you see on the modern sleds nowadays. Want to show them under the seat? Yeah. All right. This model has an accessory even. You're able to get a seat riser to get you off the ground. It works just by a little flap right here. Flip that down. You lift the seat up and you got a second toolbox under the seat. I have a small random tools, spare belt, emergency headlight, emergency whistle, towel for whatever, and a socket set. We put the foam under there to keep it from rattling and to damage the paint. The original tail light, new headlight, the original cable and spring. had a funky addition. If you look down, down there, there are these ski spacers here to give it a wider stance. That was a rare feature most snowmobiles didn't have. This model also came with bogey suspension, which is just wheels under the skis, uh, under the track, to give you your sort of suspension. Turn key on to run. Choke it. Off choke after it fires. Fire right up. Now turn the headlight on. Turn the key switch to run the light. And now the headlight's on. Beautiful. And that there is my vintage. Aaron's Arrow 300S. So that was Matt Perkle's Arians Aero Snowmobile. 
Um, that's a wonderful restoration. That was really cool watching that. Now that is footage that he sent to me a few years ago for another project I was working on, uh, but it's coming in handy right now with the podcast. Uh, let's take a look at what's next. We're going to have Richard Papusek's 1970 Ski Whiz Mackie, Massey Ferguson snowmobile. This is also footage from a few years for another project I was working on. Uh, but let's take a look. This is a cool video. Well, good evening, YouTube. Rod here in the sled shed. And what I'm showing you tonight is a 1970 300S Massey Ferguson snowmobile. This snowmobile has a 295, I think, Rockwell J-Lo engine in it, which is a single piston engine. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little walk around here. You can see it's got the chrome exhaust pipe on it. It has good skis. I put new wear bars on it. The hood was repainted. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a nice finish on it. Uh, it's got the original decals on it, so it's got, they're going to have a few little scratches and scrapes because the thing is getting close to 40 years old. The steel belly pan was repainted in the Massey Ferguson gray. There's a few scrapes on it because I've had it stored here for a couple years, but nothing too bad. Would be great for a vintage ride. Uh, we'll walk around here a little more. It's got a new seat cover on it. I rebuilt the seat, uh, the foam. It's got the back end gate with a little trunk in it. Let me show you the front here. It's got the the dash, it's got the choke and the start, and you put it here, the lights come on. I'll show you what the lights look like on. They both work. I had to replace one of those. They're rather difficult to find. Here's a little tail light. I'll shut that off. But the current controls are real good. The sled was, was inside when I purchased it on a farm auction. It has a brand new Canon, custom Canon windshield on it, so those are rather pricey to get the ones that fit it. Come around and show you the front. Got a nice steel bumper on it, not bent or anything. Come around and show the side. As you can see, it's got the original decal there. Here's some more of the seat. Nice chrome uh, back handles here for the back rider. Come around back here. It does have a little trunk here. You can see down in there. There's your gas tank filler. Got a nice. Uh, cr Steel bar back here it has a really good jet, a ski with snow flap original on it. it. Has a good track. Very few of these uh, ski whizzes is, is a track bad. It's got a boogie wheel suspension system, but they must have used really good rubber and tread in their tracks because they look really good. There's a little age showing on it, but it still would be a good serviceable track. I'm sure you wouldn't have any problem with it. We're going to open it up here, Let me show you the engine. Here's the chain case. Got a unique rear exhaust. They call them forward. The carburetor's on the front. Forward motion. I guess they thought it sucked the air better. Has a good belt on it. There's a shot of the inside of the hood. I didn't have to do any fiberglass repairs on this hood. We'll come around here to the side. Here's the J-Lo Rocco. It has the wire pull start. One neat thing about this sled, it's electric start. So that sure makes it a lot easier starting it. And um, before I start it up, because it gets a little smoky, here's some of the the original hold down straps that'll hold the hood down um, but we'll do a little start up here for you it's a fun little sled it runs really neat it pops kind of like a two-cylinder John Deere tractor but uh, I think you would enjoy it choke it a little there we go well I might have set the camera down I gotta give it a little gas when I'm starting it That gives you an idea. It's a pretty easy starter. Like I said, I haven't had this probably running in a year or so, and I messed with it a little bit, put some fuel in it, and she started right up. So it always did start good for me. I never really rode it much after I did the, this kind of semi restoration on it. It's not 100%, but I think you'd really be good for a vintage ride. You just don't find them this good a shape. And one thing, these sleds out in South Dakota, they never got rode much because we just don't have that much snow out here. So a lot of them got tucked away in the barns after they bought them. And they never got used much after that. So, and also, I'm going to show you real quick here. 
a, this is going to be, a, I think, a 72 that will be coming up on auction, too, just as soon as I get this uh, 69 listed. But that's a good sled, too. But the, you can see they changed the front-end design of them a little bit. But I'm just trying to cut down on some of my uh, snowmobiles. I'm going mainly into John Deere's, so uh, the Massey Ferguson is just kind of an off-brand for me. Thank you. Yeah, that is a really nice example. Um, and I thank Richard Papusik for that for that footage from a few years ago. Now, he mentioned that he's selling these sleds. This is uh, back in 2017, so I, I'm pretty sure they're not available anymore. But, uh, but it's still really cool to look at them. So what do we have next on the menu? We have Jeff's, Jeff Filuvo, I think is how he pronounces it, uh, Polaris TX Collection. Now, this was from the uh, Crane Snowmobile Show in 2017. We, I managed to catch him. He was loading his sleds into the trailer. And uh, before he closed up the trailer, I caught him for an interview to show his sleds. So let's take a look at these sleds. Hi, my name is Jeff Filio from Wear, New Hampshire. These are three of my sleds. I actually uh, collect vintage TX. I, all I do is TX. I can't save them all. I've got uh, every year from 60, other than 69 and 80, I've got every year. And some of them are multiples. It's a 76 340 that I bought years ago. It's original. Runs and drives great. 76 340. Another one is a, uh, next one is a 78. That's a 78 340 liquid that I actually restored as a rider. I'm going to try to get in front of it. Now, is it the first year with a liquid? Nope, 77 is the first year with a liquid. It was one of those here today. This really? Is a 78. Wow. Yeah, that, one, uh, that one runs the drive. I use that one on my trail rides. And and that kind of stuff. That one runs good. This one's a 73 440 triple Starfire that I restored. Uh, this, this sled was actually raced in the USSA Division, Eastern Division, and actually raced at this track in 73 and 74 as a, as a prep racing. And one of them, Kirk Fontaine was the guy's name. Wow, so there's some history to this sled. There's some history to this slide. This one has some history. This one, sure. and I believe it actually won a couple of features here. Well, I'm trying to get the actual proof. That one right here, it ran in Bedford. He campaigned that all over in the Eastern Division. It's actually been right now. That hood is untouched. The hood, uh, the hood is, un is unrestored. I restored the snowmobile. Brought that back. When he, he, when he finished racing it, he pickled it and put it on a shelf. And I bought it off the shelf. Went through what I had to freshen up the motor. I left the hood alone. That's exactly the way he raced it. Decals, even the decal that's only on halfway, that's exactly the way it was. I'm Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, would you say? Now, would you say this would be the prize of your collection? Is this, a... this is the prize of my collection, yeah. No nice. No, do, yeah, no this doubt. This is a non-consumer sled. You couldn't buy this. This was not sold to the general public. You had to be a dealer or a race team to buy this sled. You couldn't buy one. Wow, so no ordinary he joke. Actually, and... the, the Andre Profonte was actually the Polaris dealer at the time, so he bought it as a dealer. Sweet. He raced it. But you couldn't buy him over the counter. That's a 440, too. I bet that's fast. That is a 440 triple, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, very nice meeting you. I appreciate your time. Okay, yeah, that was locking up there for a second. But yeah, those are some nice Polarises right there. And it was great fun meeting him. Now, uh, the next video I'm going to show you is from the same show, uh, the Crane Snowmobile Show, Crane Vintage Snowmobile Show in Lancaster, New Hampshire. This is back in 2017. Now, this was as the show was winding down. Quite a few, few of the sleds had left. And this is just me walking around with the camera getting some random shots. Uh, but this is one of the great shows of the East. And as I mentioned, this is a show that has been canceled for this year, which is a real bummer. But we understand, you know, with COVID and everything. But do keep this show in mind for next year. Uh, it's usually the first weekend in February, first Saturday in February. And if you're planning to come from any distance for this show, the place to stay, just a, walk, a short walk down the road, is the Lancaster Motel. And uh, if you're planning to do that, you want to book early because this event books that hotel as well. 
So without further ado, let's take let's uh, do a little walk around tour of Crane's Vintage Snowmobile Show in Lancaster, New Hampshire, back in 2017. Let's take a look.
Yes, that was from the 2017 Crane Vintage Snowmobile Show in Lancaster, New Hampshire. That is a great show. And as I said, everyone there was kind of uh, getting ready to go. They were loading up their sleds, packing up their sleds. And so that, would, that wasn't even half of the sleds that were there. Um, and that's just a great, great show. I hope you'll consider joining us at that show next year. Here are their details about it. Of course, this year has been canceled, sadly, because of COVID. But it's it's scheduled for the first Saturday in February every year. So I hope you'll consider joining us next year for it. That's one of the great shows of the East. And if you're planning to go, you want to stay at the Lancaster Motel. It's just walking distance away. And uh, that event books that hotel solid every every year for that event. So you want to book early. Also, I was in touch with the Lancaster Motel, and they've gotten some fresh snow over there. The trails are open, and they've just gotten some new snow on top of the existing trails. So snowmobiling is at its finest right now in Lancaster. So if you're thinking about, uh, if you're maybe down country or something, thinking about coming up to central New Hampshire for some snowmobile trail riding, now is the perfect time to do it. Maybe come up this weekend or next. Give them a call. Their number is on the screen there to book a room. Um, they're right on the trail, and you just can't find a better place uh, for some central New Hampshire trail riding. And they're walking distance from Crane Snowmobile Museum. Uh, how many other snowmobile destinations can make that claim? All right, so we are winding down the program tonight. I appreciate your joining us. Uh, please join us, same bat time, same bat channel, 9 p.m. every Thursday night. We do live, um, do a live show like this for you, and I appreciate everyone that joins us, both the first-time viewers and the regular viewers really means a lot. And if you like this, I really would um, appreciate if you could share this either on your profile or on a friend's profile, if you think they would enjoy it, or you can share it as a private message. But anything you can do to help get the word out about this podcast would really mean a lot. It's a great way to, to keep this moving. We're getting some good momentum with this. It gets a little bigger every time. And uh, it's all because of you. I really appreciate that. And anything you can do to, to help that along, uh, it would really mean a lot. So thank you for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the other side. Here's a quick video about the Mad Rams product. It's the ultimate combination of simplicity and ingenuity. The newest way to load, unload, and transport your ATV or UTV. The Mad Ramps Pivoting Ramp System. Made in the USA and engineered for strength and durability. Maneuver through tight places and over rugged terrain with plenty of ground clearance. No licensing, no ongoing maintenance costs, and no storage hassles like trailers. Won't slip or move like conventional ramps. Free up more cargo space in the bed of your truck. Securely connects to your truck's receiver hitch easily extends for safe loading and unloading seamlessly retracts for highway and off-road travel dot approved in all 50 states and canada quickly disconnects in under a minute a unique space saving storage system the mad ramps pivoting ramp system go farther go faster go safer a new order using the link in the description I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs.